Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm very happy to share with you my Soviet Union guide. I updated it for Arms Against Tyranny and I also included several improvements uh, compared to the last time which will allow us uh, to win World War II even faster than before and with an even higher uh, war score than before. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer than usual because I decided with this new format to include the setup, all of my designs and templates and the war itself. Speaking of the designs and templates, of course now they are up to date, but hopefully the strategy will remain viable for a long time. But Paradox has this nice habit of messing up my designs very quickly. So just in case, I will include up here the playlist dedicated to division templates and designs for tanks and planes, in which I always upload my most updated designs. So from time to time, make sure that you're using the latest designs available. The other thing that I want to say in this uh, short introduction is uh, that this run is quite intensive. There are a lot of things to pay attention to and there is also a little bit of RNG involved. Uh, that is due to the fact that the Soviet Union has this uh, paranoia system which triggers some uh, randomized events. We're going to keep that to a minimum with my strategy but there is still a chance that something unexpected uh, comes up. And uh, the other thing that may happen is uh, World War II can play out in different ways. There is some RNG in there too. The overall outcome will not change. We're going to win the war and we're going to do it fast. But it may be that the German Reich is able to defeat France or that Hungary and Romania join the Axis uh, a bit earlier, which will make the war a bit tougher for us. So again, there is some RNG involved uh, in there. Finally, if you reload the game at any point uh, during the run, you may trigger some events uh, which would not have happened otherwise. So um, I will try not to reload the game in this run to keep it uh, a constant run from the beginning until the, until the end. That being said, I'd say we can start. Keep in mind that researches and focus will be included in the description of the video so they will not be part of the video itself. We are going to build infrastructures and full military factories from the very beginning of the game. We don't need civilian factories with the Soviet Union. If we build military factories right away, we can get some amazing tank designs, which I will share later, in time for World War II. So we are going for full infrastructures and military in Moscow, Kharkov, Krasnodar, Odessa, Minsk and Crimea. In terms of uh, military production, uh, we are going for 11 factories assigned to infantry equipment, uh, 5 to support equipment, uh, 3 to tower artillery, uh, 3 to anti-air, 5 to trucks uh, and 4 to basic small airframe and then another one assigned to civilian trains. It doesn't matter what you do with the Navy, I just build everything uh, the way it is. Okay, now in terms of uh, army positioning and uh, how to split your armies early in the game, uh, there is quite a lot of stuff to do, so I will show it uh, briefly. Uh, let's start with the cavalry, it's easier. I select all of my cavalry and I assign it to the border with Japan, let's say, around here. Uh, and I train them. They are also assigned to a new theater. In the main theater I keep uh, 24 infantry divisions, the regular infantry. But I take six of them to create a separate army, I assign my best general to them and these guys will be volunteers to Spain as soon as the, the war in Spain starts. The second main army, you can assign it wherever you want, just uh, start training them by shift clicking here. You can do it on the whole army. You can uh, just train your tanks uh, and you can train uh, your one motorized, it's actually already at regular, so you will not be able to train them. As for the Mountaineers, first you can gather all of them, but then I remove three of them and I assign them to a secondary theater. And I use the ten that have the highest fighting strength for a naval invasion of the Netherlands. The naval invasion will happen later, but we are starting the planning now. We start from Leningrad and we are going to send three of them to this harbor here, three of them here, another three here. And the last one here. So this is how we plan our naval invasion of the Netherlands. In the second theater I assigned all of the less upgraded divisions. They will become our defensive divisions later on. Another full army of uh, regular infantry. So this is how I split the armies initially. You can do it differently. But the important thing is you plan the invasion of the Netherlands and you train all of them. In terms of the navy, again you can do things differently. But I like sending them all to Leningrad and training them once they get there. In terms of planes, I like to gather them all in Moscow and then train them once they are there. By the way, I hope the name is not a description of how they really are. I usually also change the territory management, uh, local police force here and uh, cavalry here. And we're also going to create an agency from the very beginning of the game. And we're going to buy some uh, rubber from uh, British Malaya. 
And with this our initial setup is done. The next thing we need to do is uh, justify on the Netherlands as soon as we get to 50 political power. Here we go, so we can justify on the Netherlands. As soon as we get our first spy, we are quite lucky here. We're going to send uh, him or her to Mexico. To build the internet network. We're also going to increase the production of guns to 15. Mobilize the forces against Turkey, you just get some free war support. At uh, 150 political power, we're going to pick the popular figurehead to increase our stability. Next, uh, we wait for the civil war in Spain to start. Here we go, the civil war uh, started. We are going to send our volunteers and air volunteers as well. We already prepared the army. What you do with the volunteers in Spain uh, is entirely up to you. You can try to win the war if you want. It's possible, but I found it not to be very consistent. The main goal for our volunteers in Spain is to build uh, army experience and air experience for us. Uh, that's what we care about the most. We're also going to change our spy to quiet intel network in Mexico. As soon as you get enough uh, political power, you can pick uh, war economy. At this point, we're also going to prepare our navy for the invasion of the Netherlands. For that, we stop training them. We select uh, all of the submarines. And we send them all uh, here. In this way, we will get the Green Sea everywhere we need when we start our naval invasion. We also bring the production of artillery to 5 and the production of planes to 15. Next, we are going to invade the Netherlands as soon as we get the claim. For the infantry equipment, MIO, I suggest uh, this priority. We got our claim on the Netherlands, we can start the naval invasion and the war. As you can see, we can get the Green Sea everywhere. Now, the naval invasion usually succeeds, it can take a bit longer, depending on how it goes, but you usually disembark here, and my suggestion is, once you disembark with these units, try to go around them and take Amsterdam and Rotterdam from behind these guys. Uh, the other thing I usually do is I use force attack to make it a bit easier for them to disembark. Now, while uh, you naval uh, invade uh, the Netherlands, you need to keep an eye on the political paranoia, because when you get to 20% political paranoia, you want to start forging satisfactory production reports. We're also going to pick the army reformer at this point. Okay, we got the Netherlands. Uh, now, careful, because this is a tricky peace conference. Uh, you need to proceed with the following order. First of all, you take the navy. Then you puppet them and the Dutch East Indies, and you take resource rights from them and from the Dutch East Indies. Only then you add the war reparations to everybody. In this way, you're able to take everything in one peace conference. Otherwise, if you do not follow this order for some reason, you don't have enough points for everything. Now, after the war, check your army experience, and if you have about 36, you want to pick the professional officer corps right away. You also want to stop uh, importing rubber and we want to send volunteers back to Spain. As for the army of mountaineers, you can rejoin them with their comrades in the other army. We can also gather the navy and start training them again. At uh, 100 political power, we're going to pick the ground support advisor. As soon as you complete uh, this research, it's time to design our new F1. Before we do that, we're also going to pick the MIO. I suggest to follow this uh, priority. For our F1, we're going to use uh, this design and we're going to replace the default one, production to 15. Now you can focus on the civil war in Spain, but keep an eye on the political paranoia because when it gets to 25%, you want to pick inspection in the Navy. At 27%, I'm going to pick inspection in the Navy. Whatever the outcome, make sure to pick the one that decreases the political paranoia. Next, we need to pick inspection in the Air Force once again political paranoia goes above 25%. Okay, 27% political paranoia, so we are going for inspection in the Air Force. Again, whatever the outcome, we need to decrease the paranoia. For the artillery MIO, I suggest this priority, but it's up to you. For motorized, I suggest this priority. Whenever you can seize the Spanish gold reserves, that's a pretty good event. At that point, you should also get free civilian and military factories. With military factories, we are going to design our new C1 and produce it. For C1, I'm going to use this design and we're going to produce it production up to 15. With our free civilian factories, first of all, we are going to build more military factories in all of the 100% provinces, including Crimea. And then we build infrastructures plus military factories in Leningrad, Kiev, Stalingrad, Vinnytsia, Cherkasy, Yaroslav and Smolensk. We're also going to pick the air spirits. 
air cure surveys and centralized control. We're also going to make some adjustments to our templates. Starting with the default one, we want to add the engineer company and the anti-air. The rest is okay as it is. I like the combat with the of 18. We're not going to change these divisions anymore. We're also going to change the defensive division. I like to change the icon and the name to def. But more importantly, I like bringing the combat width to 10. It's a very flexible and good defensive combat width. I add the engineer company and the support anti-air. The support anti-air is not entirely needed, to be honest. So you can, uh, you can add it later or not add it at all. We're also going to recruit some of these new defensive divisions. I usually recruit five of them plus another 24 of them. We're going to accept the first German-Soviet treaty. And as soon as this focus is completed, we're also going to pick the construction company industrial concern. As soon as we get to 10 political power, we're going to improve relations with the states. As soon as this focus is completed, we want to start an assassination, subtle assassination for Trotsky. I usually press automatically repeat so that I get a notification once this is done. We can also bring the American experts. Now we need to keep an eye on paranoia once again, I know this is quite annoying, and we want to forge satisfactory reports as soon as it gets to 25% or more. As soon as we get our second spy, we're going to send it to spy to build internet network in Germany. Okay, we're going to forge uh, satisfactory reports. I was slightly late, but it's still fine. Now, at this point, usually the war in Spain is going quite bad for us. At this point, it may be better to start retreating your army to safer positions. I would also assign and train uh, the new divisions we recruited. And I would also increase the motorization priority for all armies uh, to maximum so that they don't die of attrition anymore. Again, at 25% uh, political paranoia, we want another inspection in the Navy. If you get three military factories at this point, I would temporarily assign them to support equipment. Soon we are going to assign all of them to tanks. I'm a little worried about these divisions, I'm not going to lie. Now, the tank MIO. This is quite an important one. First of all, we want this, this first perk. Do not update the equipment because we don't have our tanks in here yet. And then I would suggest uh, this priority. Now, about one month is left to the end of uh, the paranoia events, uh, and there is a chance for a bad event at this point. Uh, that's why we're saving some political power. If needed, we're going to delay the event, uh, if it's bad, uh, with political power. Okay, as soon as we finish uh, this research, we can design our new tanks. And uh, for tanks, we're going to use uh, this amazing design. Uh, this is a very, very good design in single player. Of course, it's not going to work in multiplayer because we don't have any hard attack. But in single player, this is absolutely amazing. It will destroy the Germans. We decrease the guns uh, production to 10, the support equipment to 5, and the C1 to 5. Everything else goes into tanks. Should be around 25, 27 factories at this point. We can also switch to quiet Intel network in Germany. We are done with the paranoia events, so we don't need to save political power anymore, which means we can specialize in civilian industry down here. Yeah, I was a bit unlucky with the, the divisions in Spain. Usually they go for this side first. That's okay. But we need to recruit another five divisions. And for his amazing results, we're also going to promote our general, which was in Spain. Okay, after this focus, we want to pick a new decision. This one, we will accomplish a high yield. Okay, we got uh, the assassination of Trotsky completed. And we can start uh, making a collaboration government in Germany. At uh, 150 political power, we are going to replace uh, this guy, Yagoda, with the elusive gentleman to get an extra operative slot. So we're going to use the new spy to keep the intel network we built in Germany. At uh, 150 political power, this is optional, but you can pick the captain of industry to build railways and uh, infrastructures a bit faster. Again, uh, this is fairly optional. In this game, I'm a bit low on political power, so I think I'm not going to do it. The border fight with Japan is actually pretty convenient. If you assign the cavalry like I did, you will always win and you get a nice uh, reduction for land doctrines. When you get uh, free civilian factories, uh, you can start building infrastructures and uh, forts at the border with Romania. I would build probably two or three forts uh, in each province here. We're also going to pick the military theorist. And we're going to edit our tank template. Uh, we need to make a lot of changes here. And we want enough motorized to get to a combat width of uh, 32. This is the final division. It's expensive, but it will be worth it. We also want to recruit uh, one tank and 11 motorized. We're also going to recruit another 24 defensive divisions. 
We're also going to pick uh, army regrouping. And we're going to make sure that we are producing the most upgraded version of our tanks. It was not the case. So from time to time you need to go here, click here, and make sure they don't fuck up your name like they did right now. This is how fun Arms Against Tyranny is. At this point we can also design and produce uh, flame tanks. This is the design that I usually go for. Since it is uh, fairly expensive, uh, we are going to assign uh, four factories uh, to it. We take them from our regular tanks. And we can also add uh, the flame tank uh, medium company to our tank divisions. We can also start uh, picking some of our air uh, doctrines. And we can make sure that our navy is entirely gathered and it is training. We can do the same thing for planes. We probably have quite a lot of planes uh, to be deployed at this time. We deploy all of them, we split them around and we make sure they're all training. We can also make sure that all of our armies are at maximum training. When you get this decision I usually go for some free air experience, why not? But this is a very important decision. We are not going to deal with the German Reich. This will allow us to start the war a bit earlier. The German Reich will attack us and to finish the war a lot earlier and with higher war score. So no deal with the fascists. As soon as we finish uh, this research, it's time for our F2 and C2 designs. Now, this is the amazing F2 design that we're going to use for the war. This design is absolutely fantastic. You will see some crazy stats. It has great air defense, great air attack and great range for a small airframe. So this is a really, really good design in my opinion. And uh, for what concerns our C2 design, uh, we're going for this one. A fairly balanced design with good range and good ground attack. Now, in terms of production, we are going to decrease the production of tanks uh, to only 25. And once again, for fun, we're going to make sure that the latest design is being produced. And that's not the case. Going to change the name. Make sure we're producing it. We're going to assign uh, 15 factories uh, to C2 and everything else is going to F2. We're also going to pick the decision we will accomplish again. Now, at this point, if you had some bad traits gathered from before, we want to get rid of them. So we are going to pick this decision to get rid of these debuffs. Okay, so when World War II starts, it's not going to be a big problem for us. We're not going to be involved right away. We're going to be involved after Poland capitulates, but we need to do quite a bit of setup at this point. First of all, I would use uh, the three civilian factories uh, to fully upgrade uh, all of the supply hubs uh, at the border with Poland. I also suggest uh, you force deploy your last tank uh, if it is not uh, deployed already. Now at this point we also want to assign all of the generals. Uh, this is actually fairly simple in the way I do it. I start with the main army with the marshal and I assign our new uh, OP marshal. Secondary army, any marshal is fine. And third theater, let's say, any marshal is fine. Then uh, the most important general is going to be the one leading our tanks. I usually like this one. All of the other ones are not important, so the way I pick them is I simply select them in order of uh, defensive skills. Uh, I skip this one because I like to keep him for my secondary tank divisions later on. And then I simply assign them to the armies just like that. Okay, the army positioning next. Uh, we want our tanks uh, to get the first push done from this area all the way into here. We always want the uh, motorized to follow the tanks uh, just behind them. We want the first main army to cover the upper part of Poland and the second main army in the southern part of Poland. The third army, it's a defensive army in here, and we assign it to the whole front. We want another main army at the border with Romania. The other defensive army at the border with Finland, just in case. The mountaineers down here, ready to cover this area. And the last defensive army, we assign it a full back line just behind the front, in case reinforcements are needed anywhere along the front. So this is how we set up our armies for World War II. We can also make sure to deploy all of the planes we haven't deployed yet and to train them all. We're also going to pick the armor advisor and we're going to pick some of the doctrines. Especially we want the superior firepower doctrine, this one here. And then we want to pick smoke and fire and we want to pick suppressive barrage as our favorite tactic. Now we need to wait for Poland to capitulate. 
And then uh, Germany should declare war on uh, the Soviet Netherlands, which will officially start World War II for us. Now we are going to assign all of our planes uh, to the main army, the tank army. We're going to slow down the speed a little bit and then we are going to start immediately with the first offensive as fast as possible because uh, at the very beginning the Germans still do not have much supplies. Uh, so we can take advantage of that. Now, since I'm not going to cover this war in detail in this guide, I'm going to explain briefly what, I, what we are going to do. And then you can watch the unedited version of the video if you want to see the whole war. So the first push is going to be here. And then we are going to try to encircle all of the divisions in here by cutting them off down here. Then we are going to go for uh, Grodno up here. So we, we go for a second push up here and we encircle all of their divisions up here. Then we go for Warsaw, Lodz, and from here we go all the way up to Zan Danzig and we encircle all of their divisions in here. At this point, if we did everything correctly, they shouldn't have many divisions left anymore. We keep pushing all the way to Berlin and then Frankfurt until Germany goes down. After Germany is down, we take care of Italy very quickly and then we hope that Hungary or Romania or both join the Axis and the war. Because after Italy goes down, we need another one to be the last major to defeat. Usually that's Hungary and we end the war with Hungary. That's all for the strategy for World War II. Now let's see how it goes. Look at how our tanks absolutely shred the German divisions, completely destroy them. Oh, if you have enough political power during the war, you can also pick the close air support or the air combat training. Maybe the air combat training is slightly better. First encirclement down here is done successfully. Oh, as soon as the war starts, you can also pick uh, Heroes Forward, it's pretty good. And then whenever possible, uh, uh, victory is at hand. Okay, we're ready for the second push, let's go. There is even a river crossing in here, but we are not going to care. Of course, whenever you can, uh, you should pick Doctrines, especially the Air Doctrines, which I forgot completely. Okay, we can uh, pick a policy for the Air Designs, and we're going to pick a Perfect Finish. And then uh, you can continue with this one, and this one. And we got our second massive encirclement in here. Now we need, uh, of course, we need to kill everything in it. Now by destroying all of these German divisions, we basically cripple forever their military capacities completely destroyed let's also check some stats at this point our casualties are fairly low and the German Reich has insane casualties we caused them 1 million they caused us less than 40k it's quite insane okay next uh, we push for uh, this area of Poland push for uh, Warsaw let's go Look at how insane these tanks are. Speed 3, eh? mind that this is speed 3. <laughs> I will probably not edit out any of this. Uh, it's just fun to see. Okay, after I complete the desperate measures focus, I usually recreate another army of tanks. Oh, and uh, by the way, at this point, uh, we finished all of the collaboration governments in Germany. Uh, you can do whatever you want with your spies, uh, but I would assign them uh, to spy in the States. Because uh, at some point of this run, uh, we're going to be there. And we want collaboration governments in there. Now, we can also pick the policy for our tanks. Uh, in this case, I would go for increased uh, reliability. Mechanical genius. And uh, we can also pick this one for some extra reliability. And then we prepare for the last uh, encirclement uh, up here. Let's go. Let's see if we can pick uh, victories at hand. Uh, check from time to time. Whenever you can, uh, you should pick it because this is great. And then we can prepare to close uh, the last encirclement here. And the last encirclement here. It's coming to an end. Quite a lot of divisions in here too. destroyed from now on the war against germany is uh, very easy of course we go for berlin 
as you can see uh, the fighters uh, our fighters are starting to to work uh, the f2 designs now the stats are becoming more insane it's quite interesting because you because you can see the difference between the early fighters which were struggling a bit uh, and now here it's a more advanced uh, phase of the war so we're using more f2 designs and uh, the results are quite impressive ready to push for berlin let's go now we can make some uh, changes to the production we can decrease the production of fighters uh, to 25 uh, and we can go back to 50 tanks and berlin is taken for the next push we go for something like this at this point we would be very happy if uh, hungary romania or bulgaria or anyone at all joined uh, the axis and the war against us because as i said we don't want italy to capitulate without someone else in the war Otherwise, we will have to defeat uh, the uh, German, uh, whatever, Norway. Three civilian factories, we can just build more military factories. Okay, we can send our spies uh, to quiet uh, in the States. Start making the collaboration governments there too. At this point, as you can see, the Germans don't really have an army anymore. Because we destroyed it. So, these are very easy pushes. Let's see the casualties. Uh, 45k to over 2 million. On free military factories, you should also, you should also get uh, mechanized, so you can uh, start making some mechanized with all of the future factories we have. Now, we are ready to take down uh, Germany. Unfortunately, no one else joined, which is, uh, which is a little annoying. I am a bit early because this war went particularly smoothly. We are going to end uh, Germany. And uh, Germany is down. Now, after Germany, we want to take down Italy as fast as possible. Before France uh, gets uh, too much of them. We want to claim them for ourselves, of course. Do not uh, create uh, a collaboration government in Germany yet. Uh, wait until after the war. You can freely manage uh, military factories at this point. Uh, I would prioritize tanks uh, and fighters and, of course, mechanized. Gato. Okay, we stopped France, uh, which was the most important thing. Now we're in control of Italy. If we capitulate them too fast, uh, however, we are going to have to defeat Norway as well. Ah, but Norway is defeated. Okay, then uh, I guess in that case, uh, we can probably defeat them. Without Norway defeated at this point, I would be careful to end the war. Because uh, if you end the war too fast, uh, you will have to defeat Norway, as I said, which is quite annoying. But since nobody else is in this war, it should be fine. Okay, this uh, this thing, Hungary declaring war on Romania and the UK declaring war on Romania. This is one of the weird events, uh, RNG related events, uh, which may happen, may not happen. Like in this uh, in this run, for example, Hungary and Romania did not join the Axis, uh, or at least they didn't do it fast enough. Sometimes they joined the Axis before World War II starts, sometimes during World War II. So again, there is a bit of RNG, you will never get the same result, uh, but you get the main point. Always transfer the territory to Italy, it's a free puppet for us. Okay, so since unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get Romania and Hungary in this particular run, because they never joined the Axis, uh, we will get them uh, later, it's fine anyway. Let's uh, give a last look at the stats and then end the war. We finished with an amazing 47,000 casualties, uh, I think this is quite impressive with the Soviet Union. And completely destroyed, of course, uh, the German Reich and Italy. We are going to finish the war by taking Palermo. This is not usually the case, so let me say what usually happens at this point. What happens is that Romania and Hungary are usually part of the war. And that you need to defeat Hungary after taking Palermo and after conquering entirely Italy. At that point, they usually prepare an offensive for, from here. You take Budapest and Cluj and you end the war in that way. But as I said, there is some RNG in this run. So this is how World War II played out uh, in this particular run. Let's end the war. And uh, we're also going to end the war extremely early. It's only July 1940. Quite impressive. And we're probably going to have uh, a very good war score. Yeah, 71% of the war score. July 1940 and World War II is done. So what do we do in the peace conference? Uh, if uh, you also have uh, uh, Romania, Hungary and Bulgaria in the war, which sometimes happens, I suggest puppeting them. 
But the priority is uh, to annex everything which is uh, core of the German Reich, which is everything in the, Ger in the German Reich except for uh, Bohemia and uh, Moravia. And then I would su suggest puppeting everything else. Oh, you also want to puppet this stuff here, which is not a core of the German Reich. Uh, why do we annex the German Reich? Because we have a collaboration government, uh, so right after the war we can create a collaboration government there. I will uh, skip the peace conference for you, uh, I will just show you the final outcome. Alright, the peace conference is done, so let's see what the situation is at this point. Uh, we got uh, half of Europe, uh, and like the last time, the screenshot I shared uh, on the channel, in the community section, uh, we couldn't get Romania, Hungary and Bulgaria, that's sad, uh, but uh, it couldn't be helped in this run. And of course we are in a very very good spot uh, to fight the Allies, uh, because on the other hand uh, it's also only the 7th of July, and so we have plenty of time to start preparing our future expansions. Now I will continue this run, uh, as I recently do with my guides, uh, we will go at least for the fight against the Allies, uh, and then possibly also for... Uh, the invasion of the United States uh, will probably stop at that point. So this is officially the end of the guide. Uh, a lot of work goes into these country guides, uh, several test uh, runs before I publish the, the final run. So if you can show your appreciation by, you know, commenting, liking the, the video, subscribing to the channel, that would be, that would be really great. Other than that, of course, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you guys uh, in the next video. Bye bye.